Wait, hey guys, I just picked up this cool Motorola Volumatic radio. It's the model 57W. Got it at a swap meet for 20 bucks. I'm very impressed with the condition of the cabinet. It's got that cool Batman looking logo on it. Tweed speaker grill. She's 100% original. Let's take a look around the back. Okay, I've already removed the screws. You see the back panel's in great shape. It's got the AM antenna loop. And there she is. Not much going on in there. A few cobwebs. Question is, does it work? Let's bring it up on a Variac. Now this is a hot chassis radio, as you can see. Bringing it up on a Variac right now. Up around 70 volts. I don't see anything lighting up yet. It's about 90 volts. Not seeing much current draw, but now I do see the tubes lighting. There is 100 volts applied. There she comes. Okay, but the volume's all the way down, hear it? So it will receive, but we gotta change that filter cap. So carefully get this back panel out of the way. And then it appears as though we pop off the knobs, of course. It's just a couple quarter inch driver screws on the bottom. Get that out of there and take a look at the insides. Okay, so I unplugged the speaker. Knobs are off, screws are out. You're seeing this as I see it. So there is the chassis. And here is the bottom side of the chassis. Oh, somebody has been in here. Let me see a new cap. But they didn't change that main filter cap. Also see a Black Beauty and a couple unreliable capacitors. But we're just going to start changing out the main filter and see how the radio works. Looks pretty good. Well, here is the old original filter cap. It was a 40 at 150 volts. That one should have been the 20. You can see the blue wire. And that should be a 20 microfarad at 25 volt. They put in a 10 microfarad at 450. So we're going to go ahead and change the two main 40 microfarad sections and see how the radio works. Right, so we're going to clip this guy out. I'm going to leave this negative lead long. I'm going to mount this three terminal board on the chassis. Now if you see we have three which would be negative and the two positives. We are not going to put negative to chassis. This is a hot chassis radio and that's mixture for disaster. Okay so I'll get this mounted up put on our new 47 microfarad at 400 volt caps. So there's our two new filter caps in place. This is the common wire. I'm going to be gluing these down to the chassis. These two red wires now need to connect to the two positive terminals, but you see they're too short. I'm not going to dig in here. I'm just going to extend the wires, hook them up, and off we go. All right, the caps are in place. I'm going to be using Kester solder, which is the best in my opinion. We'll get this cap soldered up on the terminal board. And in just a minute, we'll fire it up, see if that hum's gone. So before we test, I'm going to hit the volume pot a little bit of this deoxit fader. This is the stuff to use on pots. You don't want to use the D5. 
All right, chassis in. I use some jumpers to hook up the AM antenna. Bringing her back up on the Variac. Give those new caps a little bit of time to get used to the voltage. There we go. Notice the tuning mechanism is kind of stiff. But there it is. So that's a good sign. I do not hear that terrible hum anymore. Next step will be to clean and lube the mechanism and of course change out all those other caps. But the main filter caps are replaced and the radio is going to work. So yeah, if you look at the tuning little mechanism here in the slide, it's all really dry kind of corroded. I don't even know if there was actually grease on there in the first place. So I'll go ahead and clean that up, lube it, and then she'll tune a little bit better. And so what I do on these mechanical apparatuses is I wipe them down with some lacquer thinner to get that corrosion off of there. And then I'll apply some of this Keg L260D grease to the surfaces. All right, I've got the tuning mechanism cleaned and lubed so there's no more binding. You should also take a little bit of deoxid D5 and hit the little wiper contacts on the tuning caps so you don't have any scratchiness when you're tuning stations. So we're ready to put this thing in the cabinet and give it a run. You get ahead of it. Well that's a wrap on the filter capacitor replacement of the vintage Motorola radio and of course always make sure to use these deoxit chemicals for cleaning and lube of your controls.